one or two cases of rabies keep coming to the opt every now and then and there's a lot of confusion as to what to do where to send what all not to do so i decided to discuss the who recommendations regarding rabies vaccine prophylaxis in this video so the general things are that the nerve tissue vaccine should be discontinued and should be replaced with modern concentrated and purified cell culture derived vaccines or embryonated egg based rabies vaccine as per updated who guidelines pregnancy and infancy are not contraindications to post exposure prophylaxis post exposure prophylaxis should be given immediately and one should not wait the results of laboratory diagnosis or you should not wait for observing the dog if ever you suspect rabies patients presenting for rabies post exposure prophylaxis even months after having been bitten should be treated as if they were had as if they had contact even uh, uh, having occurred recently itself and prophylaxis is of two types first is the pre exposure prophylaxis before the bite and second is the post exposure prophylaxis which is naturally more important and the patient becomes more apprehensive so we all know there are three categories of wounds whenever there is a contact with the suspected rabid animal category 1 is licks or touch with the intact skin and requires no post exposure prophylaxis category 2 is nibbling of uncovered skin or minor scratches without bleeding and this requires injection of vaccine as early as possible category 3 is single or multiple transdermal bites or scratches licks on broken skin contamination of mucous membrane with saliva from licks and exposure to bats vaccine and rabies immunoglobulin both should be administered at distant sites as early as possible in this category and remember that immunoglobulins can be given up to 7 days after the injection of the first dose of vaccine so as regards the wound treatment of the post exposure prophylaxis post exposure prophylaxis basically has now we see that there are three components first is the wound treatment second is the vaccine and third is the rabies immunoglobulin if it is required that is if it is a category 3 wound so as regards wound treatment immediate water washing and flushing should be done for around 20, 15 minutes with soap and water or water alone if soap is not available disinfection with detergent ethanol iodine or tincture aqueous or aqueous solution or other substances with virucidal activity should be done and this is sometimes missed bleeding at any wound site indicates potential severe exposure and must be infiltrated with human or equine rabies immunoglobulin so that is in category 3 we require infiltration of the wound with immunoglobulins local infiltration antibiotics and tetanus prophylaxis must not must not be missed so as regards rabies immunoglobulin it is a must for category 3 exposure that is bites to head neck face hand genitals the rig should be infiltrated into depth and around the wound as much as anatomically feasible the remaining rabies immunoglobulin should be injected at an intramuscular site distant from that of the vaccine site of the vaccine which we are administering there is no need for performing a routine skin sensitivity testing these are very small minor points which we don't know in our daily practice and when it comes to us we get uh, worried there is no need to perform a skin sensitivity test prior to administration of equine rabies immunoglobulin and one should be prepared to manage anaphylaxis which can occur at any point however much precautions we take The dose is 20 international units per kg for human rabies immunoglobulin or 40 international units per kg for equine rabies immunoglobulin whichever is available at your center. It should not be delayed and if required it can be delayed only for a maximum of 7 days from the date of first vaccine dose. The date of first vaccine dose is considered to be the day 0. So up till day 7 you can administer immunoglobulin if required. If the calculated dose of rabies immunoglobulin is insufficient to infiltrate all wounds, sterile saline can be used to dilute it, but infiltration should be done around the wounds. Postpone suturing if possible. If suturing is necessary, and ensure that rabies immunoglobulin has been applied locally. So, as far as the intramuscular regimens are concerned for post-exposure prophylaxis, we know 
that basically there are three schedules. First is the five dose regimen, which in requires the administration of a single dose of vaccine on days 0, 3, 7, 14 and 28, where day 0, I repeat, is the day of the first admi for administration of the first vaccine dose. Then there is the four dose regimen, which requires giving two doses of vaccine on the day 0 in right and left arm and one dose each on day 7 and day 21. The four dose regimen is to be used with rabies and immunoglobulin in category 3. Vaccines should be injected into the deltoid muscle for adults and for children aged less than 2 years, anterolateral thigh is the recommended site. It should never be injected into the gluteal region. Now the intradermal regimen. It requires a reduced volume that is 0.1 mm per intradermal site of vaccine to be utilized, thus reducing the vaccine cost efficacy by cost by 60 to 80%. The method is appropriate where vaccine and or money are in constraints, like in rural areas with high flow clinics. Vaccine administered intradermally must raise a visible and palpable bleb in the skin. This you must remember. In the event that a dose of vaccine has been given subcutaneously or intramuscularly, a new dose should be administered intradermally. The two-site intradermal method is uh, the recommended regime which is given on days 0, 3, 7 and 28 and the two different lymphatic drainage sites are chosen, usually the deltoid muscle on the left and right upper arm. Uh, as regards post-exposure prophylaxis and immunosuppressed individuals, a thorough wound treatment should be stressed and rabies immunoglobulin should be administered deeply for both category 2 and 3. Remember, in immunosuppressed, category 2 also requires rabies immunoglobulin. Vaccine should always be administered and no modification of the recommended number of doses is advisable. When possible, the rabies virus neutralizing antibody response should be determined 2 to 4 weeks after vaccination to assess whether an additional dose of vaccine is required or not. As regards post-exposure prophylaxis in people who have already received rabies vaccine in the past like high-risk persons, two active immunization schedules are available. First is the 1-1 schedule in which you have to give one vaccine each, one site vaccination each on day 0 and 3 and the other is the 4 site single dose schedule with 4 injections of 0.1 ml equally distributed over left and right deltoids, thigh and suprascapular areas during a single visit that is on day 0 itself. No rabies immunoglobulin, rabies immunoglobulin ki zarurat nahi hai aise patients mein. However, full post-exposure prophylaxis that is vaccine and rabies immunoglobulin should be given to persons who have received uh, pre-exposure, uh, who have previously received vaccines of unproven potency or where immunological memory is no longer assured like immunosuppressed individuals like having HIV, AIDS or other immunosuppressive disorders. Now coming on to pre-exposure rabies prophylaxis which is also referred to as PrEP. It is recommended for anyone who was at continual, frequent or increased risk for exposure to rabies virus as a result of their occupation or residence. For example, groups of persons at high risk of exposure to live rabies virus like lab staff, veterinarians, animal handlers and wildlife officers. Children living in or visiting rabies affected areas may be immunized preventively on a voluntarily, voluntary individual basis or in mass campaigns when there are no economic, programmatic or logistic obstacles and travelers to rabies affected areas according to the level of risk in that area. So the PrEP regimens can be intramuscular again and they can be intradermal as well. Intramuscular is one dose, one intramuscular dose is given on each of days 0, 7 and 21 or 28. The site of injection is again deltoid area in the, of the arm in adults and anterolateral area of the thigh for children less than 2 years. The intradermal injection of 0.1 ml is given again on the same uh, schedule that is 0, 7 and 21 or 28 days as was in intramuscular PrEP regimen. There is no need to restart the series if the doses are not given on the exact date. 
Now coming on to booster vaccination for rabies virus. Persons working with live rabies virus in diagnostic laboratories, research laboratories, vaccine production laboratories, they are at permanent risk of exposure to rabies and they should have one serum sample taken every six months to look for vaccine titers after receiving the pre-exposure prophylaxis. A booster dose is required when the titer falls below 0.5 international units per ml. Other professions like veterinarians, animal handlers, wildlife officers, etc. working in rabies endemic area should have one serum sample taken every two years and a booster dose is again meant when the titer falls below 0.5 international units per ml. Routine booster vaccine doses after primary rabies vaccination are not required for the general public living in areas of risk. As regards interchangeability, when completion of post-exposure prophylaxis with the same modern rabies vaccine is not possible, the switch can be done but to another WHO recommended vaccine only. And change of route of vaccination is not allowed at all. So summarizing, there are three categories of wounds. Category 1 is contact with intact skin, requires no post-exposure prophylaxis. Category 2 is nibbling or minor abrasions without bleeding. And 3 is bites or contact with broken skin or mucosal contamination with licks or exposure to bats. Category 2 requires administration of vaccine alone, while Category 3 requires administration of vaccine with rabies immunoglobulin. Anti-rabies prophylaxis is of two types, post-exposure prophylaxis and pre-exposure prophylaxis, both of which can be administered either via intramuscular or intradermal groups. Summarizing further, as regards the post-exposure prophylaxis, the intramuscular schedules are a 5-dose schedule on 0, 3, 7, 14 and 28 and 4-dose schedule on 0, 7 and 28 where 0 requires administration of vaccines at two different sites and the intradermal schedule is again a 4-dose schedule but it is on 0, 3, 7 and 28 with 2 site administration of vaccine each. Human rabies immunoglobulin in a rate of 20 international units per kg or requiring 40 international units per kg to be given to category 3 patients and category 2 immunocompromised patients up to 7 days of day 0. And regards pre-exposure prophylaxis, either intramuscular or intradermal schedule to be administered on day 0, 7 and 21 or 28 days. Post-exposure prophylaxis in immunosuppressed individuals is... Uh, requires the checking of neutralizing antibody response two to four weeks later after the prophylaxis to see if booster dose is required or not and in previously vaccinated persons two dose schedule on day zero and three and four site single dose schedule on day zero can as well be practiced interchangeability of who approved vaccine types is permitted but not the routes of administration and booster doses in high risk population groups is required if antibody titers fall below 0.5 international units per ml. Thank you very much for a patient listening and stay safe.